bites from this week. First up, Hillary versus Donald Trump on disgracing democracy. Who wins? Watch this. Donald Trump is doing his best to confuse, mislead, and discourage the American people. I mean, he's such a downer, right? And it's time for him to stop fear-mongering, stop distracting from what's really at stake, and frankly, stop disgracing our democracy. We can't let him get away with this. I will continue to address and expose the criminal corruption of Hillary Clinton and its threat to the survival of our democracy. But I also want to spend these next nine days with the wonderful people of this country talking about my vision for making America great again. And let's talk positive. All right. Round one, Ed, goes to? Trump easily. Uh, she talks about misleading the American public. She's the, she and her husband have been the ones misleading the American public for a 20-year period. And my sense is that what this week was all about, as I said earlier, two-thirds of the country don't think she's honest. Obviously, uh, the FBI investigations and what have you, just sort of reinforcing that. Sure. Okay. Next soundbite round. Hillary versus Trump with their best attack lines. It's not okay to insult people. It's not okay. He calls women ugly, disgusting, nasty all the time. He calls women pigs, rates bodies on a scale from one to ten. The bottom line is he thinks belittling women makes him a bigger man. And I don't think there's a woman anywhere who doesn't know what that feels like. She wants to blame everyone else for her mounting legal troubles. But, but she, she has really no one else to blame but herself. <laughs> Hillary is the one who set up an illegal private email center to shield her criminal activity. Hillary is the one who lied so many times to Congress and to the FBI. 39 times to the FBI. It was Hillary who destroyed 33,000 emails after receiving a subpoena from the United States. All right, Ed, round two goes to? Again to Trump. Uh, this may be her best line of attack. Uh, I mean, Donald Trump has been insensitive from time to time in his lifetime. Uh, she's been dishonest. And I think the, the choice of being, you want someone who's insensitive every so often versus someone who's habitually dishonest and lies to Congress and what have you, uh, I think it's a pretty easy choice. All right, uh, final sound bite, okay? Hillary versus Trump. Their closing arguments. Just think about what we can accomplish. We're going to have the biggest tax cut since Ronald Reagan. We're going to rebuild our military and take care of our great veterans. We will save the Second Amendment, which is under siege. And we will appoint justices to the United States Supreme Court who will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. Hillary has been there for 30 years, and she's accomplished nothing. She's a candidate of yesterday, and we are the movement of the future. Stand up for what we can do together, because that's what this election ultimately comes down to. It's about our future. It's about who we are as a country. I will wake up every day in that White House trying to figure out what I can do to help you and you and you. America's best days are still ahead of us. Don't buy into that dark, pessimistic vision. We're going to build the future we want together, and we're going to prove once and for all that love trumps hate. Okay, final round is... I'm going to call this one even. Both of them are, are making their strong closing remarks. It's kind of a charitable throw to her, but at the end of the day, uh, uh, you know, we, it, was, it was her best message of the, of, the, of the three. Okay, so here we are four days out. You see it. I see Trump edging this thing out. I think he's got the momentum. I think the argument when people walk in the voting booth again, you want someone who's been insensitive, you want someone who's been a successful business person, someone who's a change agent, versus someone who basically has a long history of basically being dishonest. You've been doing this for a very long time. 
Is there a possibility there could be a landslide involved here? Uh, there's a momentum going towards him. I mean, I think she could squeak it out still, but I think I think the momentum is coming to him, and I think people are going to make up their minds this weekend, uh, those who haven't already, and I think it could tip to him. It's very much like Reagan in 1980. Reagan basically was very close going mm -hmm. in and became a uh, you know, 10-point victory in a 44-state sure. landslide. All right. And it has been a pleasure Thank you. My pleasure. I appreciate it very much. Thank You're you. in the ring. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Excellent analysis. All right. Uh, meanwhile, straight ahead, you know how important the state of Florida Florida is in this election, and it looks like there's a trouble in paradise for Hillary. One candidate stands out best to me as someone who's going to not shy away from issues of life and liberty. Of course, I, I don't want someone who's, you know, hiding things. We are live in Florida. Coming up next, you're watching Fox and Friends. On Four days to the finale, and it's an all-out fight for Florida the last weekend before the election. The Sunshine State, as always, playing a pivotal role in picking the next president. Phil Keating is live in Miami with a look at the latest polls. Hey, Phil. Good morning, people. Florida, the quadrennial toss-up state, is once again a toss-up. As far as early voting goes, the Hispanic vote is up significantly here in Florida, while the African-American vote is down substantially. And for that reason, President Obama last night led a rally in Jacksonville, and Hillary Clinton returns to South Florida this weekend. As always, Florida is the big electoral college prize with its 29 electoral votes. Could go either way at this point. To win, you need to get nationally to 270. If the election were today, our Fox News political team currently scores it like this. Clinton, 283 votes in the bank. Trump at 192. Toss up 63. But Donald Trump does not think Hillary Clinton should look at that and be feeling confident, but instead worried. Just out a few minutes ago, the new Rasmussen poll has up three up right now, three up nationwide. We're leading in Florida. We're leading in Ohio. We're leading in Iowa. I think we're leading in North Carolina, which is big. Doing well in Pennsylvania right there. But we are leading all over. But at this very moment, not in Florida at least, the crown swing state is an absolute tie according to the Real Clear Politics political poll average. 46.1 to 46.1. Now early voting here continues today as well as Saturday and Sunday for most of the state. And so far, more than 40% of Florida's registered voters have already cast their ballot. That is more than 5 million people. Wow. Back to you in New York. All right, so that means the lines will be a little bit shorter. Thank you so much. Bill. Thanks for that. Uh, that's yeah. right, because the lines at the early voting places, there aren't that many in every county. There's only uh, one or two in like, uh, big counties like Palm Beach, and so the, the wait can be an hour or two wow. to do early, early voting. Early voting. Yeah. Interesting. All right, uh, 11 minutes before the top of the hour, coming up on this Friday. Big show still ahead. Rudy Giuliani and Judge Janine join us coming up. And experts say that Hillary put our national security at risk with her private server. But did she also put our military members at risk? That is next. New details emerging from the investigation into Hillary Clinton's secret server. Now sources are telling Fox with 99% accuracy at least five foreign governments hacked into her emails, giving them access to U.S. secrets. What kind of danger does that put everyone in here in America? All right, let's ask Tyler Cohen Wood. Uh, she is a former DIA cyber deputy chief and a cybersecurity advisor for Inspired eLearning. So, Tyler, we look at this as laymen and we think this is bad. What's the danger? This is bad. This is really bad because if there was top secret information that talked about capabilities or potentially even talked about people who were in a covered status, this could put those people and those capabilities in grave danger. But what's even worse is that there is the potential for our national security to be at huge risk and the potential for another 9-11 style attack 
if the right threat actors got the right information. Now, so Tyler, this is a very terrible thing. Okay, so explain to the folks at home why they should care about this, because you have a lot of experience in this. Most people are just trying to put food on the table, going to work every day. They're not paying attention as much as we all are, because we're immersed in this. So what's your message for the folks at home as they're going to the polls on Tuesday? So when you go to the polls on Tuesday, make sure you do your research and make sure that you understand that there is potential for one of the candidates to have significantly not been honest, um, to have not taken security seriously, to felt above the law by having this private email server, and we won't even go into the foundation. But, but when you talk about the actual cyber hits, you're talking about drone strike locations, you're talking about people in the Pakistani or Afghani government that might be working for us, so you're talking about people uh, within the CIA whose names might be relevant. There, you're talking about I'm operations in mud huts that could be uh, locations for our intelligence apparatus. Absolutely, and capabilities that have been developed to protect our 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 country that have cost the taxpayers millions of billions of dollars. Do you think operations have been halted because of information that was found on her server? I would not be surprised and the biggest problem is we know as of now uh, the word is there's at least five foreign threat actors that have yep. infiltrated this system we may not know there could be significantly more and when doing a forensic analysis you may just not have the evidence so you may not know exactly how many attacks right. there have been and if you want to know what the emails are we do know this that the six hundred fifty thousand on uh... 